Brahma Kumaris. Om Shanti and a very warm welcome to our weekly with Brahma Kumaris. Through this series, we'll try to explore a lot of questions which have been bothering us. If you remember, in the last episode, we had reached one aspect of life, and that is that I am not this body. It's very difficult to accept, but then when we gave logic, when we really understood that, yes, I always say it's my body, you know, it means it's somebody else who's talking, and that I is important to know. That I, when we really try to find, is that I, the soul, the energy. How does it work? How can I relate to my own self, the I? These are few questions which are really pending and in this episode we'll try to find out how I can relate to myself. And taking us through this journey, it's a great privilege to have with us Brahma Kumari, Sister Jayanti, who has lived uh, almost all her life in London. She is based in London. She is a European director of Brahma Kumaris and also the NGO representative at United Nations in Geneva. Om Shanti and a very warm welcome. Om Shanti and Namaste. Sister Chanti, uh, you took us to a journey. You made us really realize, you know, that how we've lived all our life in the misconception of this is me. <laughs> and one sentence that I never say I the body, I always say my body made me really understand that yes, it's mine, but it is not me. And then we reached a level that, okay, I am the soul, but how am I? What kind of a being I am? It's really a major shift of identity from the awareness of thinking that this is me and everything that's connected with this. How do I come to this awareness that I am first? And yes, everything else is important. This is very valuable, but it's secondary. And so, firstly, just the logic and the understanding, the buddhi, the, the factor of reason, my faculty of reason begins to work. Sometimes we've thought that when it comes to matters of religion and spirituality, stop thinking, don't think, just believe. But it doesn't work like that mm. in today's world. You know, 50 years ago, even as I was growing up as a child, um, I had questions. And I was told, yes, it's important to ask your questions and get the answers. And yet, of course, some people were growing up in the belief that just listen, mm. just absorb, just accept. And that wasn't what I was understanding. No, but I think in today's world, we yeah. just, we've reached a level where we are not accepting. Mm. We need answers. You know. So I think that it's time to allow the questions to come up in a reasonable way, in a natural way. And there are answers, definitely there are answers. So first step, let me understand that I am this life force, this energy, and this is my vehicle, this is my instrument. And if I'm in charge, I the soul, look out through these eyes and I see what is it that's useful for me and worthwhile. Let me take in that information. Let me be in charge of these lenses and these cameras. Otherwise, I'm taking images and storing them and they're causing me a lot of pain. I come back to those images of horror and pain even when I don't want to. But if I stay as the master, I the soul, in charge of these eyes, then the way I look at things and what it is I see will be things that will bring me benefit, that are going to carry me forward in my journey rather than get me stuck in the things of the past. Again, I the soul, what am I hearing? Let me be vigilant and let me understand that I have to feed myself the right material, the right information. You know, people today are now more and more aware of the importance of diet and is what I'm eating going to be good for me and my health or is what I'm going to eat pollute my body and cause me pain later? But more important is, what am I feeding the soul? What am I seeing? What am I hearing? All this is food for the soul. And so let me see the right things, 
let me listen to things that are going to be helpful, that are going to carry me on my journey with comfort and ease, not with pain and discomfort. And so the practice of soul consciousness in this way is really like the driver taking charge of the vehicle once again, learning how to control the vehicle and not letting the control go out of his hands. Let me take over. That's right. <laughs> but uh, how that happened? No. Okay, one, when I had asked you that how will I know whether the body has taken over or uh, the soul? And uh, you said that whenever I feel good, that is when the soul is there, when the soul has taken over. Yeah. But whenever I feel I'm comfortable. Yeah, it's an indication that something is wrong. Um, it's like when there's pain in the body, the pain is coming as a signal to tell you something isn't right, go check it out. Mm. And if the pain persists and you keep ignoring it or trying to ignore it, the problem is multiplying people discover later. Same thing, if I'm feeling discomfort about anything, what's going on? Something is wrong because this isn't how I should be. A very important aspect of understanding is that the being that I am, the soul, has natural qualities in which it feels comfortable and healthy and those qualities are peace, purity, love, truth, and joy. Happiness, yeah. These are the natural state of the soul. These are the ingredients that make up the soul. And when we move away from those natural qualities and feelings, then there's a discomfort. We are not comfortable with life. Um, I walk in here and there's an atmosphere of antagonism I want to leave. Mm. It's not natural. It's uncomfortable. I walk in and there's an atmosphere of love. I want to stay. Mm. It's nurturing me. It's giving me what I need. You know, the body has a constituents of water and air and um, carbohydrates and proteins. And so to keep it well, you have to give it that input of water and air and carbohydrates and proteins and everything else. And if you don't, if you deprive it, something is missing, there'll be a problem there. Same thing, I, the soul, my natural constituents of who I am are these qualities. Um, love today has become confused and mixed with attachment, with possessiveness, with responsibility, and so all of these things get jumbled up and then we say, well, what is love? Mm -hmm. And so definitely today, instead of love being an energy that empowers and gives, it's become a quality, it's become polluted. So it's become something that I need and I want and I want to take. Whereas um, the natural state of the soul is that in which these qualities are there. But why we don't access them is because we've forgotten that we're souls. And so when you say, what is the feeling of the soul? The feeling of the soul is when I come back here and I connect with myself in silence, because in sound and busyness and action, all my attention is outside. When I lose contact with my inner being and I just get into external action, that's when I forget my own natural state of being and I lose contact with my own qualities and so then I start looking outside and I think that peace and love and happiness are out there and you know there's a story of the musk deer mm -hmm. you must have heard it yeah. it's sensing this fragrance this amazing beautiful strong fragrance and it goes wild looking around here and there but of course it's coming from inside mm. it and it doesn't realize it. And then when it stops, then it can feel that that's where it is. And it's a story of the human being. Mm. We go here and there searching for peace and happiness and love and it eludes us. It's going further and further away because it's within, it's not out there. And that's the biggest mistake we've made. So coming back inside means we discover those treasures within. And so I think this is the most important thing I need to do. Make time. Everyone is busy. Mm. Time isn't going to happen just like that. But 
make time, a little bit of time in the morning, maybe in the evenings, but make time and just go inside and feel who I truly am. And I connect with the goodness and the beauty that there is within. And once I've done this, my perspective of myself and my life and the world around me changes so dramatically mm. that life really becomes very beautiful because I've found the beauty within, I see the beauty of life outside also. Every single soul in its original state has these qualities of goodness and truth within itself. But we forget, we get into materialism and the influence of the body, which is of matter, this is matter, this is materialism. And so the influence of that allows the dust to accumulate and we forget who we are and we, lo we lose contact with those treasures. So the important thing is shake the dust off, the reminder, who am I? Who am I? And the mantra Om Shanti, I am peace. Come back to that awareness of the eternal soul. Give yourself time to do a little bit of cleaning every day. Imagine if your house didn't get cleaned mm. for a week, a month, a year. And imagine how long this hasn't been cleaned. Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit of time and energy and effort is required in the cleaning. And you know, sometimes what happens is that the more you clean, the more you realize all the stains that are there. <laughs> when it was just grubby, you couldn't even see the stains because it was all one total. That's why I'm afraid. <laughs> it is so dirty, actually. It's so black that I, I don't want to go. But just remember that you are that being of beauty and goodness. Mm. And so have that faith that this is the origin. And then, yes, I've been on a journey. But once I understand this, it means I can clean it off. So meditation is actually a process of cleansing. We're all hearing you, we're all seeing you, and it looks true. <laughs> that I am that beautiful, pure soul energy, which is like, like a diamond, like mm -hmm. that spark. But the moment I'm going to step out of the studio, <laughs> we're going to move to another program, I am going back to the same fear. Well, you know? that's habit, you see over a long period of time, since I was in the cradle, everybody told me, I'm the body, I'm the body, I'm the body. So the constant sound inside is, that's who I am. Now I have to start teaching myself, reminding myself. The world outside won't remind me. I have to remind myself of who I am. I think because everyone else is also doesn't remember That's you. right, exactly. And so when I remind myself, Om Shanti, you see when I greet people and I say Om Shanti, it's a reminder to me, it's a reminder to you. And But it makes me feel good. That's one thing, you know, which I did yeah. the criteria <laughs> for being in the, <laughs> yeah. in the right direction is that if you're yeah. feeling good, that's yeah. what you said. Exactly, it is. Yeah. The sign of well-being and wellness is that you're on the right track. So... These are the visible signs that indicate that things are going well. Otherwise, I may have everything, but there isn't that sense of well-being. Mm. And it's important to bring that back into my awareness. And the other thing I wanted to say was that when I have that realization of my own original goodness and beauty, my vision of you changes also. I see you as that being of mm. goodness and beauty too. And so there's no ego involved. Um, and when there's ego, there's two sides to the same coin. You mentioned it earlier. The mask that I put on to show the world how good I am, and then in silence, the other side, the inferiority complex that comes in. Both go together, the up and the down. And so if there's the high, then there's going to be the low too. But in silence, I'm discovering who I truly am. I see others with that vision of who they are. So there's no ego at all. But there's a very beautiful relationship which is based on the eternal truth that we are the same. You and I are identical. You and I share the same qualities. We are filled with that 
purity, that love and peace. And all we have to do is to remind ourselves, but through our company, help others.